Hello and welcome to Singing Bowl Yoga. I'm Ruth Ann and today's practice is going to be about helping us to clear the slate, to start anew, to um, just create a fresh start for ourselves. Every time we get on a yoga mat, it's an opportunity to become present, to let go of expectations to focus on the here and now so that we can create that vision uh, for the future that our heart desires for us. So hopefully um, this practice will allow you to shed uh, some of the things that are holding you back from experiencing um, the, your best self and uh, honoring your higher, highest good. And um, I, you know, I just hope that uh, if you're doing this on New Year's Day or one of the first days of the new year, it allows you to listen to what your heart's hopes and dreams are for yourself in the coming year. If you're doing it sometime during the year or um, not using it as a New Year's practice, but just as an opportunity to create a fresh start for yourself, I hope that it gives you what you need in order to um, realize uh, that new uh, fresh start or that clean slate. So let's get started on our backs. I'm going to have you lay down and I want you to feel grounded uh, when you lay down. So put your feet on the floor with your knees bent and then recline onto your back. Once you're on your back, put your palms down into the floor. So we're feeling as much connection with the earth as we possibly can. Close your eyes and let's take three slow, deep breaths together in through the nose and out through the mouth. In through the nose and then exhale through the mouth. Do one more at your own pace. And then just closing your mouth, let your breath resume or assume its normal, natural rhythm. But continue to know how those exhalations or feel how those exhalations relax and settle both your body and your mind. Often feeling grounded can allow us to experience that feeling of a clean slate starting anew and letting go of the old, maybe the old habits, the old fears, the old judgments, the old disappointments. so that we can open up, breathe in courage, breathe in strength, breathe in fresh vitality for life. And connect with those hopes and dreams that reside in your heart. And now use your next inhale to extend your legs and extend your arms overhead. Enjoy a full body stretch. Feel free to point your toes or flex your toes, whatever makes you feel more extended or alive or awake or alert. Feel free to blink your eyes now adjusting to the light in the room and where you're at. And now bring your arms up over your shoulders as if you're reaching your fingertips towards the ceiling and you're holding an imaginary ball between your hands. And then re-bend your knees and then float your knees up over your hips to position your shins parallel to the floor. Keep your legs about hip distance apart so there's a little bit of daylight between your feet and your legs. This would be like if we're doing sort of a hands and knees pose on 
uh, you know, the floor <clears throat> or on the ceiling, right? So on our next inhale, we're gonna extend the right arm overhead and extend the left leg out like we're doing bird dog on our backs. Notice how the back might try to arch a lot, so try to keep your navel drawing towards your spine. When you exhale, bring your arm back over the shoulder and bring your left knee back over your left hip. Inhale to extend your right leg, bring your left arm overhead, reach in opposite directions. You can always bring that right leg all the way to the floor or let it hover and then work on that core strength. As you exhale, knee comes back over the hip and arm comes back over the shoulder. Let's do that with the left leg and the right arm on the inhale. Try to stay engaged with your core, exhaling to bring the knee and arm back to starting position. Inhale, right leg, left arm, opposite arm and leg. Exhale, bring them back to starting position. Inhale, left leg, right arm. Exhale, inhale, right leg, left arm. Exhale, we're gonna do each side one more time. Right arm, left leg. Right leg, left arm. And now bring both knees in towards your chest, taking a hold of your legs in a way that's comfortable for you, either drawing the knees in by holding the shins or drawing the knees in by holding the backs of the thighs. Try to keep the shoulders relaxed here. Good, now from here, lift your head and shoulders off the floor. Keep drawing the knees in towards your chest. Swing your legs to rock yourself up to a seated position. Awesome, once we're up, let's come to tabletop. So we talked about doing hands and knees, a little bit more traditional now. Knees underneath the hips, again, uh, about hip distance apart. So there's daylight between the knees and daylight between the feet, but you can't see your feet because if you look between your uh, thighs, there's uh, the feet are hidden back there. All right, hands under the shoulders. You can always have your hands a little further forward of the shoulders to prevent uh, your wrists from uh, feeling the stress of bending in that right angle. And you do what works for you. And then we're gonna do a few rounds of cat and cow just to get the mind a little bit more synced with the body through the breath. All right, so on your inhale, you're gonna just drop your belly down. Let your chest float forward. Try to keep the back of your neck extended so you're not just crunching into the back of the neck. Use your exhale to arch your back up towards the ceiling, rounding through the entire spine as you tuck your tail and bring your chin towards your chest. Inhale into your cow. Exhale into your cat. Now do about three more, just moving with your own breath. On your next inhale, make your way back to our starting position, tabletop. And then as you exhale, draw your hips back towards your heels. Now, if landing your hips on your heels doesn't work for your knees, you can always put something behind your knees to support uh, the knees a little bit more. You could put a block uh, behind your hips in between your feet to elevate the hips. And then just start to melt your head down towards the floor. So wherever you're at, try to get melty here. This is our child's pose, but since we're just starting out in our practice, let's keep this an active version of child's pose. So walk your hands forward, stretch through the side body. As you draw your hips back in space, you feel this length on the side body. And so again, the hips don't have to land on the heels. This is about creating space between the shoulders and the hips, the fingertips and the toes. Letting the head be supported by the floor might feel good. If the head just kind of hangs there, that's okay too. And just using this time to take a brief pause in the movement knowing that we have to refuel, rest, restore, 
We have to take the foot off the gas occasionally. And then we'll use our next inhale to make our way back up to tabletop. If you moved your knees in or out, just reposition them so they're about hip distance apart. We're gonna keep the hands aligned with the shoulders, fanning the fingers out. And on your next inhale, extend your right leg out behind you. Curl your toes under and spike that right heel back. Try to keep your hips level. Keep the tailbone lengthening away from the crown of the head. Your gaze is just gonna stay soft down at the mat, maybe in between your index fingers here. And then slowly start to extend your left hand forward and then lift it off the floor, turning the left palm to the right so that your left thumb is up and your pinky is down. The arm comes right alongside the head. Now press firmly down into the top of that left foot, that left shin, and see if your right foot will start to float into the air. Lift your navel towards your spine. Lift the inner body away from the floor. There may be a little bit of wobbling here. That means that you're strengthening some of these little muscles in the body. You're just getting stronger. As that right leg comes parallel to the floor, you're reaching through your left fingertips and pressing back through that right heel with your right toes flex towards the floor. You're still lifting the inner body up away from the floor. Feel the navel lift. And now as you exhale, bring just your left hand to the floor and swing your right leg over to the left. Look over your left shoulder to watch your left foot land on the floor with your toes still curled under towards the mat and that right heel kind of lifting up over the toes. So we're not letting the outer edge of that right foot cave down towards the floor. A nice side body stretch. See if you can lift the inner thigh on your right leg a little bit more. Press back through that right heel. Let's take two more breaths here. Slow, even breaths will help keep the mind connected with the body, making that alignment with the heart easier. As you inhale, swing your right leg back out behind the right hip. Bring your right knee to the floor. We're gonna go right into the other side before we take a rest. So inhaling your left leg out behind you with the toes curled under. You're spiking that left heel back. You're leveling off the hips. There's a line of energy from your left heel to the crown of your head. So try to keep your gaze soft down at the floor. Even here you can work on feeling the inner body lift. And then slowly slide your right hand forward. Lift your right arm up into the air, bringing it almost even with your right ear. Again, the thumb is up, pinkies are down. You're pressing firmly into the top of the right foot and shin, and that left foot floats into the air. Lifting the inner body up away from the floor, keep your navel lifted. As your left leg comes parallel to the floor, you're extending through the right fingertips, pressing back through that left heel. And this is our bird dog pose. Chakra Vakasana in Sanskrit, the cross stretch balance challenge. Nice deep breaths, keep that breath moving in and out. Any wobbling that's occurring just means you're getting stronger. We're gonna release the right hand to the floor and then slowly swing that left leg over to the right. Look over your right shoulder so you can see the left foot land on the floor outside the mat. Once again, we wanna keep the heel over the toes as you spike that left heel back creating a C curve for the spine. Breathing maybe a little more deeply into your left rib cage, maybe into the outer left thigh. Find the sensation of the shape instead of just trying to find the shape. We don't need to perfect the shape. We need to hone our awareness into the body, into the sensations, into the feeling of the yoga. We're gonna use our inhale to float that left leg up into the air, swing it back behind the left hip, bring your left knee down, and then sink back into your child's pose. You can keep your arms stretched out again. We're still in an active phase of our practice, but that doesn't mean we can't just take the foot off the gas for a few breaths. Using this time in child's pose, maybe to recollect the integrity of your breathing, slow and smooth. You know, there's so much that we can't control, but we can control our breath. And when we control our breath, we can slow down the busyness of the mind. 
which might help us to then control our response or reaction to what's happening to those things that we cannot control. We're going to use our next inhale to come up to tabletop. From tabletop, we're going to work our way into downward facing dog. So lift your toes, curl them under. Once again, make sure that the knees and the feet are about hip distance apart. I'm going to separate the hands and knees just a little bit to extend this tabletop position. This will set us up for our downward facing dog. As you lift your knees and hips into the air, take a moment here. You don't need to lock up your knees. Instead, think about trying to lift your hips a little bit higher. In fact, let's bend into the left knee and try to lift the right hip up a little bit higher. Notice how that stretches the right leg in a lovely way and the right side of the body. And now start to bend your right knee and lift your left hip crease up a little bit more. This is not about locking up the knees. See if you can extend through the legs one at a time as you bend in an alternating fashion. You're also feeling the side body extend. Enjoying working your way into your downward facing dog. Now eventually come back to center. You can still have both legs uh, slightly bent and you're lifting your hips up into the air. Pressing through your fingertips, lift your navel just a little bit. You don't have to be super intense about the core. Let's take two more breaths here. Make sure your fingers are fanned out and you're trying to root more into your knuckles instead of the heels of the palms. And now slowly shift your gaze forward as you shift your weight forward and just walk your feet up towards your hands. As you find your forward fold, we're going to find a wider legged forward fold. So heel toe your feet a little wider. Make sure that the outer edges of your feet are about parallel with the mat. And then you're going to soften your belly down towards your thighs as you bend into your knees. See if you can snuggle your knees in towards your armpits. And then you can reach around behind your legs and either clasp one wrist or hold on to both wrists. Or you can even just interlace your fingers. If this you know, isn't happening for you here, you can hold on to the backs of your calves or ankles and imagine that your knees and your armpits are connected. As you dive your head down towards the floor, lift your hips into the air, trying to keep that connection between the knees and the armpits. And now release your fingertips back down to the floor. Using your next inhale, come up halfway. You can either leave your fingertips on the floor or slide your hands up to your shins and create that nice extension with the back, with the front of the body. Now, as you exhale, sink your hips back as if there's a chair behind you to sit in. Transition your hands to your knees. And now toe heel your feet in towards one another, bringing the knees and the feet as close together as you're comfortable with. Keep sinking your hips back. In our Utkatasana, in our chair pose, we're going to float our arms forward and then up overhead. Cross your arms overhead, reaching for opposite elbows. Now, sink your hips down just a little bit more, lengthening your tailbone towards the floor and lifting your heart up towards the sky. Option one, you stay here. Option two, roll off of your heels onto the ball mounds of your toes. Balancing. Yeah, a little wobbling here. Working on strength and stability. Breathe in strength. Breathe in balance. Breathe in stability. And then bring your heels back down if they're up. Use your inhale to stand up, stretch your arms up, and then release the arms down. Let's bring the hands together in front of the heart. Step your feet back out to about hip distance apart, finding your mountain pose. All right, let's use our next inhale to take a big stretch. As you exhale, bend your knees and swan dive towards the floor. Use your inhale to come up halfway 
either with your fingertips on the floor or hands to shins. As you exhale, forward fold. Inhale, we're gonna step the right foot to the back of the mat. I'm stepping my right foot back as well. Take your time here. I want you to keep your hands on the floor as you pivot your right heel down. Align your feet so that the front foot, your left foot intersects the center of the right foot. And then take your time as you lift your navel towards your spine, lift your hands off the floor and work your way to warrior two. Now as you bend into your left knee, center your weight, reaching back equally into your right hand and reaching forward into your left hand. Your gaze can be soft out over that right middle or left middle finger. We'll take another couple of breaths here. Warrior pose, especially this warrior two, sets us up for being present, not reaching forward, not leaning back, but centered, grounded. And now on your next inhale, extend your left leg. You don't have to lock up the knee. Feel like you're hugging the muscles to the bone. And then you're just gonna make sure that your feet, your legs, and your hips are stable as you start to tip from your left hip crease to bring your left hand either to the floor, the block, or your left ankle. Right arm comes up overhead. And I'm gonna have you turn the palm of the right hand forward. Feel the right shoulder blade snuggle onto the back. Feel your heart lift a little bit more. And now feel your inner body lift up away from the floor here. Nice deep breaths wherever you're at. So even if you're using a block under your hand, you're lifting up away from that. Nice. If you want to shift your gaze upward, make sure that your neck feels nice and long first. So gazing down at the floor can help. Then you can gradually shift your gaze upward. You don't have to find your right thumb. Maybe just where the wall and ceiling meet. Good, now bring your right hand onto your right hip. Take your gaze downward towards that left foot again. Bend into your left knee. And now put your left hand on the floor, just out in front of your left foot. Bring your right foot a little closer to the front of the mat. And then slide your left hand out even further away from that left foot. If you're using a block, make sure that you've got some decent distance between your left foot and your left hand or that block and then lift your right leg up into the air. Pressing down into that left foot, extend up into the left hip, and then roll your right hip over that left hip. Now there's gonna be some wobbliness here. So if you know you're safer leaning up against a wall to build strength and stability, then put your left hip up against a wall. Right hand can stay on the right hip, or we can bring that right arm back up over the right shoulder for our half moon balance challenge here. Press back into that right heel. Flex your right foot so the inner edge of your right foot is parallel with the floor now. One more nice deep breath here. Keeping your gaze soft and your breath smooth will help. As you exhale, bring your right hand down and bring your right foot down next to your left foot. Come into your forward fold. Knees can always be a little soft in your forward fold, but try to find length in your spine, the back of the neck, and the back of the legs. We're gonna use our next inhale just to come up halfway. As you exhale, forward fold. Inhale, step your left foot to the back of the mat. Go back as far as you need to. As you bend into your right knee, make sure there's a nice right angle bend there. Pivot your left heel down. You may need to adjust your right foot in a little bit so the right foot intersects the left foot. It's like you're on a balance beam here. Now lift your navel towards your spine. Root down into your feet. Feel the strength of your legs as you come up. Now if you took your foot too far back, it's going to feel a little organic. But if you didn't take it back far enough, your right knee may be compromised. So sometimes we just need to adjust once we're up. Sit down into your hips. Feel your legs nice and stable. Center your weight and then Lift your arms out. And you can always check that back arm and make sure that it's not kind of sagging down, right? Reach equally through the left fingertips and the right fingertips. Now your gaze is soft out over the middle finger of your right hand. 
but you might want to take a quick check down at that right knee and just make sure that it's tracking towards the center of that right foot. Lengthen your tailbone down as you sink down, relax your shoulders. So you're reaching out through the fingertips, but the shoulders don't need to be tense. One more nice, even, soft breath here. We're gonna use our next inhale to extend the right knee, drawing up into that right hip, making sure the hips feel nice and stable, making sure you feel the muscles of your legs hugging the bones, and then tip from your right hip crease. Yeah, usually this right hamstring will tell you how far to go. So just listen to your body. Maybe the right hand lands on the right ankle or the floor, or you've got a block handy to use. Go ahead and use it. As you reach up through your left fingertips, turn the palm forward and just feel that rotation in the shoulder. Open up the heart. Again, if you wanna look up, first look down. Steady yourself, lengthen your neck, and then look up. Maybe just to where the wall and ceiling meet. Maybe you see that left hand turned forward. And that openness in your heart, open to new experiences. Visualizing that clean slate, letting go of what has not served you to reach your highest good. Now, take your gaze back down towards the floor if it's not there already. Bend into your right knee as you bring your left hand to your left hip. Step your left foot closer to the front of the mat. Find the floor with your right hand or get your block handy. And then bring your right hand out, usually about 10 to 12 inches out in front of that right foot. As we lift the left leg up into the air, extend your right leg fully. Flex through that left foot so the left hip rolls over the right hip. Yeah, find some steadiness here. There's no need to look around. Look inside, feel the muscles working for you. Press back into that left heel. Maybe the left arm comes up over the left shoulder again. Maybe you wanna turn the palm forward even. And then don't forget to control the breath as you breathe in and out smoothly and slowly. The body finds more steadiness. The mind stays focused and you find balance. To come out, float your left hand to the floor next to your right hand. Bring your left foot to the floor next to your right foot and find your forward fold. And once again, just taking a pause, pushing the pause button or just taking the foot off the gas and just noticing what it feels like to recharge, refuel. All right, on your next inhale, come up halfway. As you exhale, forward fold. Let's inhale, walk your feet to the back of the mat, finding your downward facing dog. Once again, there's a lift in the hips. You're not pushing your heels down, you're letting them float down with that gentle pull of gravity. You're pushing your heels back in space. Pushing through your fingertips to extend the side body a little bit more. Two more breaths here. And now exhaling to bring your knees down, pointing your toes and sinking back into your child's pose. This time, if you want to make child's pose a little more restful, you could cross your arms underneath your head. Or if your head easily reaches the mat, you could swim your hands back next to your feet. Let your shoulders relax. So continuing to push that pause button, finding uh, that ease here, wherever you're at. And now we'll use our next inhale to meet up in tabletop pose. Swing your feet out from behind you and we're gonna sit. So let's start um, seated with our knees bent, feet on the floor. And then we're gonna take the right leg off to the right and 
bring the left foot in towards the hips. Now, if your right hip is elevated a lot, then go ahead and bring your right leg in just slightly so that you feel really anchored on your hips, on those sits bones. The right foot is flexed, so the toes are flexed up towards the ceiling. And we're just gonna rest the right hand on that right leg. But again, feel the inner body lift up away from the floor. If you need to prop up your left knee, you could always throw a, a block or a folded blanket underneath. And now inhale to swim your left arm up into the air. Bring your left hand behind your head, pointing your elbow up towards the ceiling. So we don't want the arm pushing the head down or the hand pushing the head down, but rather use that head or that hand or that arm to lean back into. And then keep the heart open, keep the inner body lifted as you slowly lean over to the right. So reaching your right foot is not the goal. Creating space and openness, moving energy, this energy that helps us to clean the slate, right? Lifting your heart, finding the breath so we can use the breath to cleanse, to clean, to let go of what we don't need anymore. Good. and then use your inhale to come all the way back up release your left arm down and we're just going to switch sides so bend your right knee extend your left leg out position yourself so you feel balanced on your sits bones or any adjustments you need to make go ahead and do that keep your left foot flexed and you can always prop up that right leg if you need to left hand rests on the left leg right hand rests on the right leg and we feel that inner body lift. Find your shoulders positioned over the hips. It might even feel like you're leaning back a little bit, but feel that lift. And then swim your right arm up into the air and then bring that right hand behind your head. Maybe sliding it down. It's like a half uh, cow pose for our arms. Leaning back into that right arm or hand and then slowly making your way over to the left. Still lifting the inner body up, just like when we were in triangle. So you're not leaning down into that leg, you're lifting up away from it. And then feeling all that energy move, gazing wherever it's comfortable, but make sure that the head is leaning back and not leaning forward. Go ahead, we'll use our inhale to come all the way back up releasing the right arm down and then just help your left knee to bend we'll bring both feet out in front of us position the knees and feet really close together here and then uh, you're probably facing the front of your mat we're just going to butterfly the knees out now as you do that make sure you can still feel like you're lifted here so oftentimes we make the mistake of bringing the feet as close to the hips as possible and then we collapse right or we've got to work really hard to keep ourselves up so maybe moving the feet out a little ways from the hips, kind of rocking into your Baddha Konasana, your cobbler pose, will allow you to feel more ease in this shape. Feel free to boost up the thighs if you need to. Sit nice and tall, holding on to the legs wherever it's comfortable, knees, shins. Some of us might be able to reach the ankles, but we want to make sure we're using this pose to create length and space in both the front and back of the body. extend just the right leg out onto the mat you want to slide your left foot in a little bit more now if your left knee is elevated a lot here please support it put a block or a cushion or even a folded blanket underneath if that knee released down and you're pretty comfy here then you might not need support keep your right foot flexed your right heel down while the back of the leg is relaxing towards the floor, we don't wanna hyperextend the knee, so we don't want the heel lifting up off the floor. And then once again, feel really stable in the legs and the hips, and then just hinge from the hip creases to come forward. So for some of us, 
this is it, right? Keeping the shoulders relaxed, letting go of expectations. For some of us, we can melt a little bit more, right? But make sure that you're keeping the back body long, keeping the front of the body long, leading with your heart here as you melt out over this right leg. And you might be able to take a hold of your right foot. Some of us might be able to go past the foot and find the wrist. And then you get to decide where you go here. If you're using a strap, that's a nice way to go into the pose, but resist the urge to pull yourself in to the pose and instead just continue to melt. And drawing that right hip crease back just a little bit, bringing your head and heart forward wherever you're at. And then again, just controlling the breath to control the mind, right? You can't control all the situations and you really can't control your body. But by slowing down the breath, we might be able to soften some of that resistance, tightness, and let go of that tension. On our inhale, we'll slowly release and make our way back up to a seated position. Awesome. We're just gonna switch sides. So extend your left leg out, bend your right knee, releasing the right knee out to the right. The right foot's kind of snuggled up against that left thigh. The left heel's on the floor with the toes flexed. Another thing we wanna kind of look at is uh, if the inner and outer edge of that left foot are about the same distance from the hip. So sometimes the outer ankle takes a little vacation. So right now we need it to, to be active to support that foot and also give us that nice support for the outer part of the leg. Again, the leg is melting down towards the floor, but we wanna make sure that left heel stays on the floor. You can always prop up your right knee if it's not relaxed here. Make sure we are on both sit bones. Legs are stable, hips are stable, and then we're hinging from the hip crease. Once again, hands could just stay behind the back. You're leading with your heart. Listen to your heart. Maybe the hands come forward. Keep in mind you are not completely symmetrical. Even though you've got two legs and two arms and two ears and all that stuff, one side does things different than the other side. So honor your body. Feel your body. Notice when you reach that maximum resistance. There's no need to bounce past it or to dictate that you go further. And again, if you've got a strap, you can use the strap, but don't over muscle with the strap. If you're able to take a hold of your wrist out there, again, it's not about pulling yourself in forcefully, but just melting in. Yeah, melting that resistance, melting that judgment, melting that fear, making space for courage and strength and vitality, for inspiration, for action. We'll use our inhale to work our way back up to vertical. Good, and then once you're up, we're gonna go ahead and extend both legs out. I think it feels good to just sort of windshield wiper the feet a little bit here. Good. And then go ahead and bend your knees again. Just take a quick glance behind you and make sure you've got a nice place to land on your mat. And we're gonna end up on our backs again. So coming back to that starting position where we have both feet on the floor, arms alongside the body, palms pressing down. Position your feet so they're about hip distance apart and you can even walk your feet in a little closer to your hips. Maybe you can kind of feel your heels with your fingertips. Knees are about hip distance apart. Make sure the feet are even with the knees. So it just feels supportive, right? If we have the feet too far away from the hips, the hamstrings are gonna have to work extra hard for this next pose. So we wanna make sure that uh, the feet are in pretty close to the body, but they're also a safe distance away from one another. Press down into your shoulders. Do not press the back of your head into the floor. Just let the head rest on the floor, but make sure that the back of your neck is not in contact with the floor at all. So sometimes we've got to rearrange uh, the head a little bit. 
And now on your next inhale, push through your feet and your shoulders to lift your hips into the air. Just coming into your bridge pose. Keep the knees even with the hips. So sometimes the knees want to roll out. It helps to push down into the tops or the uh, big toe ball mounds. As you lift your hips, sometimes the biggest muscles in our body want to do all the work, the glutes. So see if you can soften the glutes a little bit and instead push out through your knees, push down through your shoulders. Again, just make sure that your neck is not in contact with the floor. And please do not turn your head side to side when you're in this shoulder bearing uh, posture, a bridge pose. We want to make sure we keep the blood vessels and the nerves that travel through the neck safe. Bridge pose is uh, a nice uh, representation of kind of shedding the old and heading into new territory, a new reality, right? Just taking this time to cross that bridge. We'll take two more breaths here. And now just use your exhale to lower your hips back down to the floor. Spread your wings, bringing your arms out even with your shoulders. If you don't have the room, you can always bend your elbows in a gold post shape or have your arms a little lower. And now toe heel your feet out to the outer edges of the mat. We're going to keep the knees bent. You may need to adjust uh, you know, the distance of the feet away from the hips here. And then as you exhale, drop both knees over to the right. Inhale your knees up, drop both knees to the left when you exhale. Inhale back to center and continue moving with your breath, alternating moving the knees side to side. Now next time your knees release to the right, let's stay there. Option one, just leave your feet on the floor. Option two, your right foot will lift and come on to your left knee. Now, if that doesn't feel good, you just put your right foot back on the floor. Option one, you just keep your gaze at the ceiling. Option two, roll your left ear towards the floor, looking towards your left hand. Making sure your shoulders feel supported here. You may feel a little extra stretching going on on the left side of the body and especially in the left hip, <clears throat> excuse me, or uh, front of that left thigh even. And eventually bring your gaze back to center if you've diverted it to the left. Bring your right foot back to the right edge of your mat and then use your inhale to bring your knees up. Exhale both knees to the left. Now, option one, the left foot just stays on the floor. Option two, the left foot comes onto the right knee. Making sure that that right shoulder stays supported. Your next options, keeping your gaze at the ceiling or bringing your right ear towards the floor just by turning your head to the right. And then just explore the sensations. These spinal twists are a lovely way to wring out tension in the back, the upper back, maybe even the neck and the shoulders. You're probably feeling a release of some of that tightness and tension in the hips, maybe in the quads, the quadricep muscles of the thigh. But also, you can sort of visualize wringing out uh, what you need to let go of from this past year and making space for the new. We'll use our inhale to bring the gaze back to center. We'll put that left foot back on the floor if it's not there already and then bring the knees up to center. Good. Now toe heel your feet back in towards the center of the mat. Lift your feet off the floor and bring your knees back in towards your chest. Draw the knees in. Again, either holding on to your knees or shins or the back of the thighs. As you come into this double knee hug, start to move around a little bit, wiggling side to side, maybe circling the knees around. If you're circling, go the other way a few times. 
and then eventually draw the knees back in towards the chest. Feel free to curl into a tight ball here by lifting your head and shoulders off the floor. And then go ahead and release, letting your head and shoulders come back down, letting your feet come down to the floor. And now extend your legs back out onto the mat. I like to do one at a time. And then wiggle the feet around a little bit, maybe even separate the feet so they're a little wider than the hips. Bring your arms alongside the body with the palms shining up towards the ceiling. Let the backs of the hands be held by the floor. Close your eyes and let your body be held by the floor. Let's stay here for a few breaths. Coming into Shavasana is again another way for you to take your foot off the gas, to rest, to restore. Allow the breath to slow down. And once again, you can use your exhalations to soften the body, relaxing the muscles of the face. Relaxing the shoulders and the arms. Letting your fingers rest in a curve that's natural for them. Relax your hips and your legs. And feel the tips of your toes go limp. Relax your back and your belly. And allow your attention, your mind, to rest as well. Just feeling held by the floor. There is nothing to think about or do in this moment. Just be. At the sound of the singing bowl, begin to become aware of your surroundings. With your eyes still closed, imagine the room where you're resting. Make a slow transition out of your Shavasana by becoming aware of your hands and your feet, wiggling your fingers and your toes. And then begin to stretch out the rest of the body, bringing your arms up overhead, stretching out your legs, your trunk. Take some deep breaths in and out, stretching out your rib cage, stretching the breath. And when you're ready, draw your knees in towards your chest, roll to one side or the other, and make a slow, and gentle transition into a seated position. Once you're seated, please draw your hands together in front of your heart. Bow your head downward. Close your eyes again. May this practice help you to clean the slate, to start anew, to refresh, Thank you so much for joining me in this practice. Namaste.